Sunday, November 21st, 2010. For fans of the St. Louis Rams, it is a day of hope. The Rams are surprise contenders in the NFC West. Today they will face their first true test of the year, the conference leading Atlanta Falcons. In just hours, another page in the story of the Rams season will be written. But the start of today's game will also be the last page of another story. A story told to the Rams veteran leader, 27-year-old running back, Steven Jackson. Sundays may be the milestones of the NFL calendar, but the days between them mark the season's arduous journey. A journey that until now has remained unknown to anyone besides the few who walk it. It is a story of struggle and survival, of solitude and togetherness, of frustration and hope, and ultimately for Steven Jackson, of faith. It began a week earlier, some 2,000 miles away, in San Francisco. Sunny skies, about 70 degrees, no wind to speak of here in San Francisco. Perfect weather for the Rams and 49ers. A highly anticipated matchup between NFC West rivals. A victory, and the 4-4 four four Rams have a winning record for the first time in several seasons. San Francisco's game plan is simple. Stop Steven Jackson. And they got it set up. Steven, 25, 30. High step in 35. They get to Steven off left tackle, tough sledding. Dumps it for Steven, right flat got To the 25, high step in 35 to the 40. Near sidelines, 35. On second and 15, they give it to Steven Jackson off right tackle. He does a good job of just to find three yards. And he catch 40. 45, he's dumped out of bounds in the 49er sideline. Got 12 or 4 to play in the first half here at Candlestick Park. Sam looks, dumps left flat for Steven. He's got company, no gain. Against the four-man rush, dumps it short for Steven. Try to sidestep the tackle, he will, and he picks up some yardage and gets out of bounds, stopping the clock. Gives inside to Jackson. Bradford on first down, gets to Steven. Off left tackle, not much there. Runs into traffic, runs out of the tackle. To the 10, to the 5, he's in. Touchdown, Steven Jackson. A brilliant 13-yard run off right tackle. 49ers have come back with 10 points here in the fourth quarter to take a 20 to 17 lead. Now the 49ers are in the neutral zone. They get the five yards back. It's a free play. Bradford launches down the field for Jackson, who makes a circus catch in the field of play. What a grab by Stevenson Jackson at the 18-yard line. The catch would lead to a game-tying field goal and overtime. It would not be enough. Got a 10-14 to play in overtime. Snap is back, ball is down, kick is away, it's up, it's good. The 49ers have won in overtime, 23 to 20. The flight from San Francisco, California to St. Louis, Missouri is four hours. After a devastating loss to the 49ers, seems far longer. The adrenaline begins to wear off on the plane ride home. By the time he's in his car, Steven Jackson can feel the toll of the day's game throughout his body. Seven years into his NFL career, Jackson has developed his own system of post-game rehabilitation. His St. Louis home contains a specially constructed recovery room, complete with an ice bath, a hot bath, and a hyperbaric tent. After every game, Jackson purchases 20 bags of ice from a local mini room. One by one, he loads them into the ice bath. Because he has a broken finger, it takes longer tonight than usual. The ice bath provides temporary relief from the day's physical trials. 
It also gives Jackson time to think, a chance to reflect on the game that was. He ends the night sleeping in the hyperbaric tent, breathing oxygen-rich air that will aid his recovery. His day will start again in less than five hours. A new week has begun. Players train themselves to have short memories after a loss. But the body has a memory all its own, which is why Steven Jackson begins each week with recovery. The Central Institute for Human Performance is a training and rehabilitative center. It cares for its clients using a combination of chiropractic, alternative medicine, and performance training. Visits to CIHP have become staples of Jackson's work week, and its founder, Dr. Clayton Skaggs, has become a trusted member of his inner circle. 2007, I actually tore my groin. I uh, found out about a particular doctor, Dr. Skaggs, and he worked with a lot of St. Louis Blues players. And I, from what I found out, that a lot of hockey players come up with the groin injuries due to the ice. He introduced me to a new way, a new frame of thinking, from the acupuncture to even vitamins, vitamin intake. I wasn't, I wasn't doing any of these things. When he first came to us, he certainly, uh, I feel, was a little more susceptible to injury. He had some, some weaknesses uh, within his, his, his physical makeup that uh, through hard work and, and uh, persistence, he's now created more stability where I think he's a lot more resistant to injury. I broke this finger, my, my left ring finger, um, Tampa Bay game. I, I asked the team doctor, I go, is this dislocated? And he goes, well, I don't, I'm not sure. I, he go, want me to give it a snug, you know, try to put it back in place. I go, yeah, can you put it back in place then, you know? So he pulls on it. <laughs> I'm like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Pins were surgically inserted into Jackson's finger. The next day, Dr. Skaggs began treating it with acupuncture. The healing has been significant, and usually without incident. Mm. You never want that thing. You did that on purpose. <laughs> I did not. I swear you did. <laughs> Most days, the St. Louis Rams practice facility is a hotbed of activity. But today, the complex in Earth City, Missouri, is a virtual ghost town. Tuesday is a sanctified day for players in the NFL. It is their day to rest. Steven Jackson is no exception. He spends the day in the house he bought his rookie season, doing as little as possible. Mondays through Wednesday are pretty much the same. It's a lot of ice, a lot of treatment. Although the pain uh, seems to be continuous, there's always a different spot. His daily activities consist of a rehabilitative massage, listening to music, responding to fan messages online, and sometimes simply being alone. Anyone that follows me on Twitter know sometimes I go silent for a little while and that's just so I can just uh, keep to myself. I, I search for answers a lot and, and uh, I kind of distance myself while I'm trying to find the answer. 